This is The Lockpicking Lawyer, and I love that you guys send me all kinds of interesting locks, many of which I've never seen before. This is one of them, sent by Simon in Great Britain. The included note says it was bought in England more than 30 years ago, and I've not been able to learn anything else about it. In fact, I don't even know if this was designed to take one key or two. All I know is that it says Salisbury on the bottom. It is, however, exceptionally well made and has a mechanism I've never seen before. It takes two key blades, each one of which controls four sliders that travel in a circular path. It's also a throwback to when it was normal to make a lock out of two pounds of brass. So I decided to bring this lock back to life by machining a key for it. I doubt this looks anything like the original, but it does match the lock and it works. So this will be a great addition to my collection. If you do know something about it, please leave it in the comments below. But for now, let's see what it takes to pick this open. I'm going to use a 50,000 stick turner in the upper right hand portion of this keyway and a standard hook. These are both part of the Genesis set that I sell over on covertinstruments.com. I'm just going to push those sliders to the side until I feel a click. There are two in each corner. I got a click out of the first, nothing on the second up in that corner. Click out of the first, nothing on two. Okay, the one in the bottom right in front is binding, little click there, nothing in the back. And a click on the front, little bit of movement on that core. Let's go back to the beginning. Nothing on the front. Back one, nice click there. Back one is binding very tightly. Hmm, there we go. Click out of that back one. Nothing on the front. Back is binding. A little bit more movement on that core. We should be getting pretty close now. There we go, we got this open. Okay folks, as you saw, it does take a bit of skill to open, but it's also not overly hard. It's not gonna stop a skilled picker for very long. Now, because this is such an unusual lock, I'm gonna take it apart most of the way so you can see the mechanism. The first thing we need to do is loosen this set screw, and just a couple of turns will do the trick. Then we can loosen the shackle guard on the top. That just unscrews, as well as a little ring. I suppose they put that ring there so you can't slip something in between the two sections. But frankly, I'm not sure you can do anything by, by shimming in this direction anyway. So I'm not sure why that ring is present. Probably just to give it a clean look. That is the locking lug by turning that will secure the shackle in place. There's a brass ring that limits the movement of the core to 90 degrees. There is a nylon washer, probably to provide a little bit of lubrication. And you can see there are two sidebars, one on each side. And I'm gonna pull this out. And unfortunately, it doesn't really stay together very well. I'm gonna hold all the parts in place, but there's no such thing as an organized disassembly here. Once I let go of these, parts are just gonna start dropping out. And there we go. Okay, I'm not gonna take this section apart, but what you can see inside are little sliders that rotate. There are two in each corner. And you can see when I insert this key, it moves those sliders a bit. Now to rekey this lock, you can choose where to put that little horn on the slider in these notches. So each slider has four potential positions. Then once these sliders line up with the sidebar notch, the sidebar can drop right in and it allows the core to turn. Then all of these other semicircular shapes are just there, I think, to hold everything else into position. So 
I hope that was clear, but that's all I have for you today on this interesting old Salisbury lock. Folks, after I stopped the camera, I realized this would be a really interesting lock on which to show reassembly. So we're gonna do that right now. The first step is to insert the key. It does matter which direction you insert the key. I put a little notch so I know that is the top. Once the key is in position, I'm going to try to place the sliders. And since the key is in position, I'm going to place the sliders where their notches will line up with the sidebar notch. I didn't quite get that one in the right spot, so I'm just going to push it over with my lock pick. There we go. There we go, and to hold those into position, I'm going to place a sidebar on them. Now I'm going to do the other side Okay, now I can insert the other sidebar. And we can place each one of these semicircular pieces in position. can now remove the key, which is hard to do because I'm pressing on the sides and that holds them in place. There we go. Okay, now we need to drop this into the barrel. And I need to make sure everything's lined up before I put the sidebars into position. There we go, those sidebars are all the way down. I can now put this nylon washer back into position as well as this plate that limits rotation, the position, the piece that locks the shackle in. And we can put this back on. And we need to make sure that the notches inside line up before I put that set screw into position. We are now reassembled. Okay, folks, that is really all I have for you on this Salisbury lock. If you do have any questions or comments about it, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.